Hello children, we are with the next chapter that is computer memory. Now all these are part of one single unit you see. All these theory chapters considering or con con consisting of this um, computer memory, computer organization, computer system which you just finished. All these are part of one single unit. But we need to split it up as second chapter so we are talking it as, as second chapter. So what is there for this? We really need to know the different kinds of memory we have. Just like we learn the different kinds of devices like your hard disk, input, output devices. We are going to just have an overview on the computer memory. So let's not waste the time and move on to your computer memory. What is computer memory? It is just like your human brain. There you store your data and your instruction. So actually in the memory when you see, of course your hard disk you already saw, that is the area where you have your main memory stored. Now apart from that you have of course in your uh, operating systems and all those things, your RAM, your ROM, everything. Okay. So there in your computer memory is a storage space in the computer where data is to be processed and instruction required for processing are stored. So typically examples and uh, you know syllabus always say a lot of definition but it always interrelate to each other. So they are same isn't it? So like I told earlier RAM then ROM then uh, hard disk there also is stored where data has to be stored permanently. So you may think uh, all these definitions are same. What is the use of studying this way? Of course, there are certain link with all these things, but you need to understand what is what dis uh, disciplinary in a, in a disciplined manner, in a better manner. Okay. So, once again repeating that, what is a computer memory? It is a storage space in the computer where data is to be processed. That means where you process your data and the instruction, that is your program. When you learn your Python, what you do as your step-by-step -step instruction, that also has to be stored, isn't it? So the instruction required for processing are also stored. So it is like in our brain you have a lot of neurons, correct? So the same way you have your uh, collection of cells, each with a unique physical address. It is like each of the, uh, you know, typical cells or each of the typical fingers in our uh, hand is identified with a different kind of a, you know, uh, marking. You have here unique physical address and each is identified as byte. This I think I might have discussed with you in the earlier chapters or in the first chapter when we discussed. So it's called a byte. So most computer we say it understands only machine language. What is machine language which understands only two kinds of you know numbers. It is binary numbers, zeros and ones. So combinations of the zeros and ones are nothing but your address of each cell in the memory. So once it is go, given over here, a combination, correct? See the number you have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, correct? Starting of course with 0 to 7, but what I am saying is when you count the number, V in a mathematical style counts from 1, one only, but in computers the counting always starts from 0, that is why it is shown as 0 there. So 8, the combination always have an 8. So these 1, 1, 1, 1 areas are called bits. So combination of 8 bits, what you call, uh, forms a byte, which I have told earlier. So if you wanted to actually calculate the memory size as it is given here, we, we say it has 64K words. What is the meaning of that? The unit is measured with 1024 bytes. So you have to can multiply that 64 which you just told. K stands for kilobytes. And that will be multiplied and you will get 65,536 memory locations. So, in order to understand that in a better manner, we are going to the next section. It is called memory units. Now, this memory unit is what, what with the help of which we identify a particular amount of data in the um, computer. A file, an um, image, a program, an audio, a video, everything is identified or measured using memory units. So, unit of measurement in computer is done with the help of that word called as bit. As I just told, bit. So it's a binary digit. It can be a single one or a single zero. And the abbreviation is B. B in capital or B in small letter. Both are okay. Okay. Now four bits if you have that is called a nibble. Four bits if you have it's called a nibble. And uh, eight bits is called a byte. 
It's also also called octet, but we won't use that word often. We call it as byte only. Now starts the next, you know, measurement capacity when the number of you know bytes increases and it reaches 1k. See 1kb. That's called 1024 bytes. Now 1024 kilobytes is equivalent to 1mb. What is m for? Megabyte. Now 1024 megabytes is equal to 1gb. Gigabytes. Now from there you know you might have heard this you know terms may very often in your a laptop in your Androids or in your iOS phones, correct? Uh, how many? I mean, uh, you'll always ask your friends how much GB, correct? So that is a most common prevailing measurement. But slowly it has gone to terabyte because nowadays computers, the laptops is even uh, storing that 1024 GB. It is your one TB. So in my system, it's the one TB of data which I have. Uh, I mean, one one TB is my storage space. Okay, and it has even moved on to what we call as one TB. Okay, terabyte. After that, petabyte came. So petabyte is the area where I think right now the industry is standing. The others are going to come. Of course, in supercomputers, you remember supercomputers. In supercomputers, it might have already come. Exabyte. So one one thousand twenty-four petabyte forms your exabyte. Exabyte. I should not say hexa. It's exabyte. And then you have 1024 exabyte causes or uh, forms what they call zettabyte. And the final one, of course, 1024 zettabyte causes your one yottabyte. That much of capacity-based computers or laptop has not been coming in, or, or it's not right now available in the market. But of course, till petabyte it is found. But we need to just have uh, you if you are if you are purchasing, it's fine that you have of course a 20 GB hard disk is fine enough for you to store all your data. Depends on your availability in the financial, you know, it's constraints you have. You have to limit. So the specification which you ask, I have already given to Father. Let, let us see whether he has, uh, you know, forwarded it to you. Otherwise, do let me know regarding that. So this is your memory units. Okay, starting from one bit onwards, it is unidentified and it is recommended that you learn this properly. Okay. Now comes the different kinds of memory. Memory is primarily divided into or different types. As cache memory or cache, that's the way we pronounce it. Cache, cache is also fine. Primary memory, main memory, uh, any of these words are fine. Then you have your secondary memory. So first, we need to concentrate on what is this cache memory. Yes, of course, there is one. Uh, this one over here, but in a in a when a, another manner I can say it's a very special or it's a special very high speed memory. It's the way it's given also, which can speed up the CPU. It is used to speed up and synchronize your high speed CPU. That means yeah, it is used to speed up your CPU. So that sentence it is given here is fine. Now it's costlier than the main memory or the disk memory, but uh, we need to have it. Okay. And it is extremely fast, and it acts as a buffer. It's given here, buffer between CPU and the main memory. Now, main memory is what your RAM. Okay, that is going to come only. So it's actually used for what purpose? It is used to reduce the data. I mean, access of data's average time to access the data from the main memory. Once again, cache memory is used to reduce the average time to access the data from the main memory. So when you learn, you know you need to learn. I let let me just see whether what I just told is no. So it's, it will be sent to you, okay? That word which I just told. So cache memory is a very high speed uh, memory which can speed up the CPU. First sentence to identify it, it acts as a buffer between CPU and the main memory. That is your second sentence. Then you can say cache memory is used to reduce the average time to access the data from the main memory. So that way you have three sentences to write about the definition of your cache memory. And of course, it is given here if you want. And apart from what I told, you can write it is used to hold those part of data and program which are most frequently used for the CPU. Like if you always give the print command, you can think about that. So uh, there are various, uh, you know, different different kinds of caches in the CPU. We can say level one cache, level two cache, it is register. Register is actually the memory where the data is stored and accepted. 
that are immediately stored in the CPU. Like for example, you what you have, what is a common command which you give normally will be found in the cache. Okay. Anyway, that much of index process you don't have to go. I'm just telling you. So once again, what is cache memory? It is a very high speed memory which can speed up the CPU. It acts as a buffer between. Buffer means what is buffer? Intermediator. Okay. Buffer between CPU and the main memory. What is the main use of it? Uh, it is used to reduce the average time to access data from the main memory. So I think with this we can stop so that we can continue the same thing in the next class. I hope you have understood that part very clearly because if I extend without knowing, it will be going like that. So that's why the, what, that's the reason why I am stopping it now regarding cache. We will move on to that once again in a better manner.